Okay then gang, so in the last lesson we made a web form for creating new Ninja records and in this lesson I want to hook that form up to a route to handle the form submission. So then the first thing we need to do is set that route up inside the web routes file and we're going to do that at the very bottom below the other routes. This time though, on the route class, we're going to use a post method and not a get method because when we submit the form we'll be sending a post request and not a get one. After that, we need to add the route path and we're going to follow RESTful convention when it comes to these paths by using just forward slash ninjas. Now you might be thinking, well, we already have a route for forward slash ninjas and that's the index route. And you would be correct. But for that route, we have a get request, whereas we're setting up now a route to handle the post request to that path. So this is fine to do. We can have routes with the same path so long as the request methods are different. Okay then, so now we need to hook this up to a controller function. So I'm just going to copy the one above right here and we're going to paste that back in. And then we're just going to change the controller function name to store, which is the handler function we're going to use to handle the post request and save or store, in other words, the data in the table. All right. And then finally, we need a name for this route. So we're going to tack on the name method and we'll call it ninjas.store. So then... Now the route is done, we can go back to the web form and we can fill out the action attribute on the form itself. So the action should basically point to an endpoint or a route on the server which can then handle the submission. And we've just made that route called ninjas.store. So we can say right here, double curly braces to use a named route, we'll use the, uh, the route function. And we're going to pass in the route name which is ninjas.store. We also need to say that the request method for this needs to be a post request. And now when this form gets submitted, it sends a post request to this ninjas.store route. And in turn, that's going to invoke the store function within the ninja controller. So now we need to head to that controller file and flesh it out. So what do we want to do in this function? Well, we want to access the data from the form that a user submitted, and then we can validate that data and save it as a record to the ninjas table. Now, fortunately, when we're handling a request in one of these functions, we get access to a request object as an argument. So we can say right here, request with a capital R and then dollar sign request. Now, the first request thing right here is just us specifying the type of the argument. And the second one is the argument value itself. And on this request value, we get access to a function called validate, which we can use to validate the user input that comes with the request. So to do this, I'm going to create a new variable called validated, and I'm going to set that equal to dollar sign request. And then we use the validate method on that. Now, as an argument to that, we pass in an array. And inside this array, we can validate all of the input values as key value pairs. For example, we can specify the name value as a key. And then as a value for that, we can say within a string, some validation criteria. So I could say, for example, required. And then after that, a pipe to add another condition. Then I could say um, it must be a string maybe. And then another pipe. And then finally, I'll say max and then a colon 255. So what I'm saying here is the name input value is required. It must be a string and it can't be more than 255 characters long. All right. So next up, I'll do the skill field. So the key name is skill and the value of this is required. So we can say that and then a pipe and then we'll say integer to say this value must be an integer and then another pipe. And then I'll say the minimum value is zero then another pipe and then the max is going to be 100. So right here, I'm saying the skill value is again required. It must be an integer between zero and 100. And by the way, these key names should match the name attributes from your form on the different inputs. And in turn, they should also match the column names in the ninjas table. So there needs to be absolute parity between those two things, the web form inputs and the table column names. Anyway, next up, I'm just going to paste in two more validation rules for the two remaining fields, which are the bio field and the dojo ID field. For the bio field, we've got some very simple validation conditions. And for the dojo ID, we say it's required, but also that the ID must exist within the dojo's table in the ID column. That's what this bit checks right here. All right then. So now we've done those checks and we can save the new record to the table. 
Now this validate method returns an array of key value pairs where the key is the column name and the value is the input value for that column. So then we could just say down here, for example, ninja, then a double colon, and we're gonna use the create method to create a new record. And as an argument, we just pass in this validated array because it's already in the correct format of an array of column values. Finally, I just want to return a redirect from this function so that once we've saved the record, we then redirect the user to the home page. So we can really easily do that by saying return and then we use the redirect function and then we can chain on another method called route where we can specify we want to go to the ninjas.index route. Now there's one more thing we need to do for this to work and that is to add the dojo underscore ID column to the fillable fields inside the ninja model because we're trying to set the dojo ID property when we create the ninja. And remember, when we mass assign values to a record, we have to explicitly say which columns can be set within the model itself in the fillable array. So open up the ninja model and then just come to where we have that fillable array and just add the dojo underscore ID value to it. All right, cool. So now hopefully, fingers crossed, everything works and we can start creating new Ninja records. All right then, so I'm gonna create a new Ninja by giving it a name, that's gonna be Yoshi. The skill is gonna be 100, of course. For the biography, I will say I like to hunt for eggs. And then I will select a dojo and we'll just go with this one down here, Spinker Lockman, create the ninja and we get redirected back to the home page and we can see that new ninja that we just created right here. If we view the details, we can see the skill level, the about me and the dojo information as well, the Spinker Lockman stuff. All right, cool. So that is all working.